Hi everybody, welcome to Win Pillow Talk. Another awesome day. We're grateful to God for His mercies that are new upon us every day. Sorry, I have a cold. England for you at this hour, at this time. We give God the glory and praise. He's faithful. God is faithful. Doesn't matter what you're going through today. Doesn't matter the issues or the problems you encountered. He's brought you this far. He'll not let you fall or sleep in the name of Jesus. Hang in there. Your testimony will be next in line. Today we're talking about the importance of being a salt. Why will Christ himself say we are the salt? He did not say you are going to be a salt. He did not say you needed to do something to become that soul. No, he says you are the salt. Sometimes we miss the concept that we are. How Then <laughs> I thought, how are we the salt? Of course, you go back to the beginning, the beginning of creation. Genesis 1, 26, God himself says, let us make man in the image and in the likeness, in our likeness and in our image. So you are the salt of the earth. You are, you're the essence of Christ. So to me, when I look myself at, on the mirror, when I look at the mirror and I see the reflection, I say, do I reflect Christ? Do my actions, do my uh talk reflect Christ and if it's not I am not being the salt he is expecting me to be why if you put salt in anything it changes the flavor it changes the the thing if you put salt in water the water tastes differently if you put salt in food the food tastes differently if you put salt in anything it changes it either for the worse or for the better if the food becomes too salty you cannot eat it. You just dump it. Sometimes when you put too much salt, the salt doesn't dissolve anymore. It just stays in there. So we lose that saltiness. You lose the taste and it's thrown. Well, if you don't know your salt, if you don't know you are, you are not going to be. You know, we're not human beings. We're not human doers. We're human beings. God has already created with everything that we need to be, to be the salt. But are you going to remove the essence of you? When I see you, when you see me, do you see the essence of Christ? That is what we're looking for. That is who we are becoming, the essence of Christ. So what was Christ's character like? He did not keep us in suspense, neither did he uh, hide it from us. He told us. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Why? Those who worship God will worship him. Say, God is a spirit. And those who worship him would worship him in spirit and in truth. So for you to be like God or for you to know God, you need to move in the spirit to know God. It says, blessed those who mourn. Mourn from dying of old you to the new you. The new you embracing Christ and trying to live as you were supposed to. And of course, it's going to cost you. It says, blessed are the meek in heart. He reminds us, say, blessed are those who hunger and test after righteousness. Are you hungering and testing for who you are supposed to be? Do we even know who we are? You know, everybody tells you who you should be. Every situation, teachers, parents will tell you who you should be. But have you ever asked God, who are you? We probably never ask those questions. It's never occurred to us. We've been so uh, doctrined and our um, situations in life have just made us gone with the flow of what people say. It says, blessed are those who are merciful. Are you merciful towards others even when they wrong you? Sometimes it's difficult because the flesh wants to revenge. We are good at doing that. But we are reminded that we, you are the salt. The salt becomes merciful to others. It's a blessed are the pure in heart. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, Lord, I could understand why we have lost our saltiness. Cleansing our heart is not a day's, it's not an easy process. It takes commitment, consistency, and persistency to cleanse your heart to be pure because people would always come to hurt you People always come to derail and distract you. It is an intentional choice for you to keep your heart pure. That you may see God. Because it says with iniquities in our heart. What does it say? It says we're not going to see him. 
So for you to see God, that heart needs to be pure, pure. Mm. and that on its own, it's so hard except with the grace of God. We are reminded, blessed are the peacemakers. Are you trying to be right or are you trying to make peace? Sometimes you would say sorry when it's not even your fault just because you want peace. Sometimes you need to move at the higher level to be a peacemaker in life, in situations, in, 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 in things of life. Doing that sometimes, yes, you'll be prosecuted. Guess what? People are not comfortable with that. People are not used to that. So don't give you all names. A doormat, desperate, um, low self-esteem, everything that will make you store hatred in your heart, which means you will not see God. That's how Satan deceives all of us. But we're reminded you are the human being God made, an image and likeness of him. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, who do you see? Do you see the image of God or do you see the image Satan has made you become? Yes, we understand the world we live in is a fallen world. It's a world that Satan has control. So we have been doctrined and engineered to operate in the things of the earth, in the things that work against the will of God. Watch your TV for 10 minutes, watch the adverts. Every advert has a sexual connotation attached to it. Why, why is that? Are we trying to be so morally corrupt? If we look around us these days, we're actually morally bankrupt and corrupt because we have lost our saltiness. The Bible says when we lose our saltiness, we are good for nothing but to be thrown. And of course, people trample over you because you've lost the essence of who you are. Our essence is to be like Christ. That is who we are copying. That is who we want to be like. He came on earth to show us how we should operate. To show us how we should carry ourselves. To show us how we should forgive. How we should walk as he did. Is it an easy, easy process? Hell no. But without his help, we cannot do it. Today I encourage all of us to just surrender our will. You know, the problem that differentiates us or removes us from Christ is our will. We are so full of our will and full of ego. Our ego removes us so far away from all, from God. You're, you're worried about more keeping an image that is useless, keeping an image thinking that you want to be become like these days. Every single person wants to be an influencer. Influencer for what? What are you influencing? Are you influencing people to look up to Christ or are you influencing people for your own good and your own wants? Let us dig deep and ask a question. Why was I created? Yeah, I am an image and likeness of God. Am I representing God on earth at this hour, at this time? Or am I representing something very far away from God? All the answers are in the manner of life. You and I, our decision is to look at it and audit our lives and audit ourselves. Lord, how far away am I from you? How do I get closer to you? The easiest is repent. Ask for his mercy. He is just and able to take you and call you home. Leave you the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son came to the father and said, Father, I need all my inheritance. I have, I am entitled. And the father said, of course you're entitled. Of course. He took the inheritance, went and used his money uselessly on ungodly things and stuff. And when the money was finished, he started living like a peasant. He had lost his saltiness. He was now being trampled on. He was sleeping with animals. And an aha moment came and he himself realized, you know what, even the servants in my father's home lived a lot better than with the lifestyle I'm having here. So I will go back and ask my father to forgive me because not I have sinned against him, against the most high God as well, that he should take me back as a servant. At least I'm guaranteed a meal. 
I'm taken good care of. To his surprise, when he turned and came back, our arms were opened waiting for him. He was washed, he was enthroned, a party was thrown because he had come to himself to know who he was, that he was a salt. Today, my darling brothers and sisters, I encourage every single one of us to come back to the essence of who we are. Let us be that salt. That salt, you know, the essence of salt is what? It's a preservative. It's a seasoning. Let your life be seasoned by the fragrance of Christ. Preserve other people's lives by your action. Don't be an influencer to take people to hell. Be an influencer to showcase God and show them the way to make internal life. Join me as we dictate deeper than ever before to become the Christ essence on earth at this hour at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Love you guys. Bye for now.